Good morning, everyone. <laughs> this is update for September 2, 2022, uh, day 191 of the war and of the date update. <clears throat> We're just going to focus on military situation as everybody who follows understands that uh, right now we have the most critical, important uh, fight over the initiative in this war that's happening on the uh, Kherson bridgehead, which uh, effectively what's going to happen there will probably affect the next, the fall, what's going to happen in the fall of this year and going into the winter, which is uh, is coming and uh, it's going to make everything much, much, much more difficult uh, military-wise for civilian uh, population and uh, we're afraid that the number of deaths will be, will be magnified significantly due to the <clears throat> cold season uh, uh, in Ukraine. So let's just first start uh, now with uh, our typical uh, clockwise fashion walk through the front line. <clears throat> We're gonna uh, start from the very north uh, and uh, look what's going on along the state border. Things along the state border are more or less the same, no surprises here, just exchange, typical exchange of artillery fire, mortar fire, sometimes uh, commander action, so uh, sort of all typical small, I would say, Non, uh, non-invasive sort of uh, type of activities. Uh, now let's move to Kharkiv area. Uh, uh, front line there was uh, relatively quiet, meaning there were no active attack, not even probing attacks here. Just exchange of the fire, of artillery fire, all all sorts of fire, but uh, no active sort of action here. Uh, Russian uh, resources continue uh, saying that there is some kind of uh, offensive brewing up, uh, Ukrainian offensive brewing up here from Kharkiv area. We believe this is completely uh, misleading information. We're not sure why this is being spread. Maybe just, uh, uh, you know, they just need to sort of show that they're doing something. But um, the most uh, Russian sort of side is trying to achieve here is to increase the buffer along the state border in, in the sort of this uh, western direction by capturing Uda Alexandrovka. So essentially, they just want to capture this area, <clears throat> which is going to be very difficult because they didn't even capture this whole area during the initial days of the invasion in Ukraine. This uh, this area around Zolochi Uda was kind of like a stronghold, Ukrainian stronghold that they didn't even manage to capture at that time. So we just think that all of these attacks in this direction and basically a mute point, but nevertheless, they try. Uh, now let's move south. Let's look what's going on on the Zoom bridgehead. <clears throat> Since here, uh, actually absolutely quiet, meaning there is no active, just want to qualify myself, uh, no active sort of action. Um, there is always, because there is no contiguous front line here, so I just want to explain what's going on here. There is always action by them. Mm, like tank, like call it like tank, tank hunting groups. Uh, most of this is Ukrainian ones. Uh, so they infiltrate and then <clears throat> they try to hunt down Russian armor, basically shoot it down with anti-tank uh, guided uh, uh, rockets. Usually they use Stugna, <clears throat> could be Javelin. Uh, Stugnas are now sort of hard to come by because uh, Ukrainian in, uh, industry is not uh, sort of producing much, uh, maybe even totally not producing. So it's more of uh, using uh, Western uh, equipment. And, and then because of that, then you see the special forces brigades here. The purpose of those is actually uh, basically hunt down those uh, Ukrainian uh, crews that infiltrate and destroy them, basically. So that's the essence of, of the fighting here at this point. There's no active action, uh, at least it wasn't today. It, and it looks like the whole idea of this uh, large Russian uh, offensive, that was the, the goal was to finally squeeze Ukrainian troops from <coughs> uh, from the Netsk region. And because uh, Luhansk is essentially captured, totally at this point uh, went out of the window uh, and essentially abandoned. Uh, also related to this, what happening is that uh, Russian leadership, political leadership, uh, wants to do the uh, referendums in Luhansk um, 
then the next region also in Kherson region is a Parisian region I basically create legit look appearance of legitimacy where uh, people will vote to uh, basically join Russia. Uh, so the problem is all of those uh, even referendums, even from the sort of this twisted approach to legality, uh, is that Russian troops don't really control either, any of those reason, regions fully. Uh, the, 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 the only region where the Russian troops control almost everything is uh, Luhansk. Uh, but they still don't con don't control two or three villages there. So technically, from the sort of this uh, the understanding of the of the legal work from a KGB perspective, it still doesn't work. So this needs to be full full control. So for that for those reasons, all of those rumors about upcoming referendums are being pushed pushed further and further into the future uh, because they were built on the hope that Russian troops fully capture those regions in question and then you can do that. So uh, that's not going to happen until those regions are fully captured. And as we said, Luhansk is the uh, lowest hanging fruit in this uh, <clears throat> in this situation. Uh, now let's move to a Northern Pass section of the front line. And things here are sort of typical, nothing unusual, frontal attacks in Solidar area frontal attacks in Bakhmut that don't go anywhere. Uh, then a similar situation uh, attacks in Vasela Delina, Zaitseve, so all typical areas without much progress. Uh, Russian troops are still uh, like sort of squeezing out Ukrainian troops out of the western outskirts of Kadima village. Uh, so far we don't have confirmation that they got full control of it, but it, as we said before, it looks like a, it's just slow motion uh, process of um, losing Kadama for Ukrainian side. Then Russian troops are continue attacks here from kind of like a, from the air like towards the area of Majorsk. There's a small village there. So now understanding that they feeling that the frontal attacks don't go anywhere. They are trying to launch launch attack from the south and you know in attempt to <clears throat> like this uh, you know. Uh, create this sort of threat to the flanks of Ukrainian troops in Bakhmut area and essentially force withdrawal, which uh, we don't think is going to go anywhere at this point, uh, given the whole situation on the front line. Uh, now let's move uh, south, let's see what's going on west of Donetsk. Things here are more or less the same, nothing really new here, attacks from Piski area, uh, attacks here um, from northwest of Avdivka with the whole goal of again creating some kind of salient or creating the mm, threat of encirclement here in Avdivka and force withdrawal of Ukrainian troops from there. Uh, there were um, extremely minor progress of Russian troops towards Pervomaisky, so they look like they fully, fully now control this junction that we have here because before the Ukrainian troops were here. So it was fire, you know, they didn't have full, the Russian side didn't have full control. It was sort of, there was a fire control by Ukrainian side. So now it looks like they finally pushed Ukrainian troops inside of Pervomaisky at this point. There were typical attacks uh, toward, uh, directed at Pervomaisky, Vodine, Opetne, Nevitsky. So, Nothing really new here, all the same, without really meaningful progress. Uh, now let's look what's going on at the Parisian front line. Things here are totally frozen and essentially they were frozen since, I would say, a, like mid end of April uh, of this year. So uh, essentially just exchange of, of artillery fire, some attempts here around Vuhledar, Zlotaniva to um, to destroy this uh, Ukrainian strongholds, but there were pretty weak uh, attempts at this point. Now let's move to uh, Kherson bridgehead and let's just kind of have another sort of fresh look and update what's going on. So things here sort of in this uh, in this uh, western sort of section of the bridgehead are more or less static, meaning there are exchange of fire, there are some local attack attempts but the front the point is the front line is static it does not change and it seems like the both sides have sort of balance of power so they, they balanced and 
nothing moves in either direction essentially essentially like let's say north of Snihorivka and all the way to uh, to basically Black, Black Sea here mm, there is a village called Alexandrovka that's controlled by Russian troops here near Stanislav uh, then uh, the most sort of promising and where the developments are happening in the most dangerous situation is for the Russian troops is in this more like eastern northeastern section of the bridgehead um, specifically this area between Snihorivka and the video bread kind of in the middle here that we we're gonna look a little bit closer uh, then this area around Lysokopilia where essentially 45th uh, Special Forces Brigade is um, essentially encircled here and then uh, it turns out that the Ukrainian troops are advancing here in the most sort of kind of like eastern section of it and kind of like engulfing Russian troops in Zolota Balka and eventually this uh, may lead to some kind of like tiny encirclement or we'll see where it all leads but there is some advances here uh, in in addition we want to say there are small tiny you know, uh, encirclements have of both sides happening here and there. More it seems like uh, of the Russian troops. And general situation is the following: that Russian command is throwing tactical bombers, like such as uh, Su-24, uh, Su-34, uh, in attempts to stop uh, Ukraine advancing Ukrainian troops. Uh, meaning that they not shooting this unguided missiles like attack helicopters or Su-25 that has pretty close to zero uh, chance of hitting anything useful. Uh, they basically um, forcing the pilots of those uh, Su-34s, uh, Su-24 to do nearly suicidal missions where they actually drop bombs, always then guided as well bombs, but. Those bombs you are kind of forced to be on the target, over the target, in order to even have any kind of chance to hit. The the, the reason we're saying this that this is a somewhat a change and sort of desperate move uh, is because past let's say months or two months or so, um, the Russian tactical uh, bombers were essentially gone from the front lines because it has become too dangerous for them. Ukrainian side has enough of uh, this man-held anti-air uh, missiles uh, then there are old soviet systems up there russian uh, radar systems are getting destroyed pretty actively so the whole sort of ecosystem is extremely unfavorable at this point uh, for uh, russian uh, tactical bombers and for those reasons they were sort of kept away because in order not to have uh, extremely high losses in those and so this is uh, now is in a way kind of sign of some kind of desperation the it looks like the the whole offensive is still looking is still moving it's a uh, it's definitely like grinding it's not really going as planned for sure uh, so let's actually look at this area between david brid and snigorivka so this was the first day initial attack that was captured of this village uh, Suhistovok and advance advances to Bruskinsky here to this road T twenty two zero seven. Then uh, next day Russian airborne troops kind of came here, uh, did some counteroffensive, pushed Ukrainian troops out of Bruskinsky. Uh, Ukrainian troops started pivoting towards small like south, captured Kostromka. <laughs> then uh, the next step was uh, yesterday, they kind of pivoted even further, well, not pivoted, but moved further, captured this village Shaslivo, where they were stopped by, again, Russian airborne troops. So what happened today, they actually moved and sort of more towards, I guess I would say, uh, southwest or, uh, or west from the, just from by looking like this at uh, this just this map uh, and captured this village Bezimen. So then Russian side started. Uh, you, that's where they started using those tactical bombers to essentially wipe out the entire village and Ukrainian troops there. So at this point, situation is unclear what's going on but what it also tells us that this whole area is essentially this specifically is 
essentially free of Russian troops and we leaning towards that this whole area more and more has been evacuated by Russian troops, but we don't have firm confirmation of that. Um, so this is what's going on here. As we, that's why I was saying it's it's a uh, it's it's just grinding sort of through the stone basically. This whole advances here, and uh, remains to be seen if Ukrainian command is still committed to put more to throw sort of more reserves. Uh, more basically more wood into the fire so um, but it's probably very clear to them that uh, Russian command Russian troops are stretched to the max they th this is not like a easy walk or anything is easy it's it's on the verge of the sort of like collapse let's put this way for the Russian side uh, and at the same time we're not saying that this is easy for Ukrainian side there's a lot of uh, dead soldiers, there is a lot of wounded, uh, the, the hospitals in Odessa are full, the, um, the, there is tons of sort of blood being sort of collected for, for wounded soldiers and so on. Uh, so it's, it's definitely in this whole offensive in the phase where you basically spend a lot of resources in the hope that you're going to sort of create a breach and then you're going to exploit this situation but uh, Ukrainian side has not passed through that moment where you need to have or spend resources to achieve your end goal uh, so let's uh, let's move a little bit sort of let's look what's going on here in the north because it looks like uh, there's some different developments here so uh, this is uh, what's sort of uh, the first day of attack Ukrainian troops attacked from the area of Potemkin and kind of started slowly encircling this uh, Russian 45th uh, Brigade in Olhen and Vysokopilia. Then they also did frontal attacks here, uh, Ukrainian troops meaning, and they were not successful, were repelled here. Uh, then um, the next day looks like they managed to capture this village. Ukrainian troops who captured Arhanginske, uh, advanced a little bit further here to essentially um, create encirclement, not full encirclement, meaning there is still sort of a land connection, but essentially it's under fire control from both sides. So it's um, the, the resupply of Russian troops is extremely difficult and probably leads to a lot of losses. Um, then let's actually see what happened, what we're learning sort of uh, for today is that Ukrainian troops managed to advance and they got to village Khrushchenivka, which is here. And there is village Zolotabalka, right, almost there on the side of this artificial lake. So that's why we're saying that Ukrainian troops are sort of advancing and then kind of like engulfing this Russian defending troops here in Zolotabalka. And uh, this is another area where it looks like Russian this Ukrainian uh, troops here kind of hit, hit sort of emptiness behind the, the first initial uh, defensive line of Russian troops and they have been tried to stop by Russian tactical bombers essentially here by Su-34 and Su-24. Uh, so uh, this is uh, another sort of interesting development and remains to be seen how Russian command will deal with this uh, bridge in the front line. Then uh, the, another thing that was happening is that it seems like that the 45th Brigade uh, tried to make, launch desperate attempts to kind of resolve the sort of the problem and to uh, remove this uh, threat uh, to be encirclement because essentially they they probably running low on everything and they really need to either sort of break out completely surrender or destroy this ukrainian salient here that creates uh, fire control over this bottleneck and prevents resupply of everything there so so they launched those uh, those uh, small scale counter offensives that didn't go anywhere uh, but we're pretty sure that there will be something, some kind of like resolution to this situation in, in a, probably tomorrow or in a day because this, this cannot last for sort of long at this point. 
Um, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and until tomorrow. Bye-bye.